So Sue, you've been a Googler for five years, mm -hmm. yes. working as a software engineer. Yes. Could you tell us all about it? Sure, I joined Google about five years ago. So I started uh, from Android. I've been working on Android Hangouts and then Android Messages. Okay. And it's been very challenging and rewarding since uh, there are hundreds of million people who can use the feature that you build in. Android Hangouts and Messages, wow. Yeah. So you've really been hitting lots and lots of users. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. so, yeah. Cool, so, and then from that now you've moved on to services infrastructure. Could you mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about that? Yes, yeah, so uh, I joined the service infrastructure team about a year ago. Okay. Uh, it's been exciting and quite challenging as well. Um, since it's unlike uh, Android applications, service, uh, service infrastructure is a little, a little more hidden. Okay. That um, the end customers uh, are service producers that may not even meet them or interact with them. So what exactly is services infrastructure? If I'm like a developer, how do I interface with it or how do I use it? Or Sure, yes. So service infrastructure is the Google's foundational service platform okay. um, that Google used it to build our own APIs and services. Now, I, as an external service producer, you can utilize um, our Google's service infrastructure to manage your own APIs and also publish your services. Okay. So if I'm a developer and I'm building some kind of application and I want to use Google services, there's so many good ones, right? And how would I go about you know, getting started using them on service infrastructure platform? Yeah, so you can use service infrastructures through uh, cloud um, endpoints. Okay. So basically, you can, um, so cloud endpoint is the API management platform in a nutshell, and okay. then you can, it can help you create, deploy, um, monitor, protect your APIs and services. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is you can write your API and services in any language or any framework. Okay. But you need to also write a service configuration, okay. which will may have a uh, service name, title, uh, RPC API definitions, okay. and also how your service may behave. For example, um, for each user, what is the quota limit for it? or what kind of API metrics you want to gather for your APIs. Okay. And then you just push that service configuration to the service infrastructure, and we do all the work for you. Nice. So during runtime, um, your service may have an API, API calls to the service infrastructure um, for precondition checks. For example, uh, whether this user calling your service has the enough quota limits to call the service. Oh, nice. Yes. Okay. This so, is, mm -hmm. And then the details of creating all this are in the documentation, and we'll put a link to that in the comments below. Uh, but also, isn't it like if I want to consume existing Google services, like maybe translation or maps or something like that, that's all run by the services infrastructure team too? Yes, so basically the service, the service infrastructure um, is used for almost all Google internal services and APIs. Okay. So all these uh, like Mipes APIs or translation APIs are built I mean, are managed and published using our service infrastructure, which is also one platform, the t-shirt that we're wearing. Nice, yes, nice green t-shirt. I thought it was Android, but now I see it's one platform. <laughs> Good thing we're not filming on a green screen today. Uh, so uh, so, so what, that's one of the things that I thought was really neat about this was that the things that we do for managing scalability and quota and all of that for our services are also available for your services as a developer. Yeah, right? exactly. It's like uh, monitoring, uh, logging, authentication, billing and quota management, all these things is what we're providing to the service producers. So what's it like day to day being a software engineer on all of this? I mean, um, so for this new project or I mean for this service infrastructure so that end users will see the end-to-end um, -end experience. Nice. It's awesome. Nice. And now, outside of doing software engineering, you also have a 20% project working with the TensorFlow team, right? Yeah. Thank you, Lawrence, for <laughs> presenting this experience to me and opportunity to me to uh, work on this new YouTube channel, Coding TensorFlow. Um, yeah, so I'm very passionate about AI. And also, uh, Google has this amazing AI platform, mm -hmm. TensorFlow framework for- I've heard uh, of it. I hear yes. It. Yeah. So, so that everyone can, I mean, everyone can use the, uh, can use AI and use their in imagination and build mm -hmm. their own things and their own applications. And I really want to promote this 
uh, in the Chinese market. China has a big uh, market in AI as well. I mean, with AI becoming such an emergent thing, not just as a technology, but also as a new tool for software developers, and with so many software developers in China, that it's, uh, it's really nice to be able to reach out to them. And uh, What's your experience been like? Have you had feedback from developers who've been watching your videos? Yeah, they're surprised because I am a software engineer at Google, but I also do this advocate thing uh, for TensorFlow. Mm -hmm. um, I think the interesting idea is Google really provides this culture um, that allow me to do anything that can excite me. Um, so okay. working as a full-time engineer in the service infra infrastructure team, uh, also promoting AI for developers. So it's been very rewarding. And that's great. And the first batch of videos were around TensorFlow Lite, so TensorFlow working on Android and iOS phones. And what's your next set going to be? Yeah, it's going to be JavaScript. JavaScript, so, yeah. like, so TensorFlow in the browser? Yeah, exactly. That You can build your AI models and run it in a browser using JavaScript um, or Node.js. So it's pretty neat. Cool, It's cool. pretty light. <laughs> nice pun. So thank you so much. One final question, though, would be like if for developers, if they want to learn more about what you're doing with TensorFlow or if they want to learn more about services infrastructure, where would you point them? Like, or what advice would you give them? Yeah, so... For service infrastructure, we have a pretty concise documentation. Uh, we can uh, paste the link yep. in the YouTube videos. Yep, exactly. And also for the TensorFlow Lite videos and the JavaScript uh, JavaScript videos, we Coming can also soon. post the link. <laughs> yeah. OK, and like they're available. The, the Chinese ones for the Chinese audience are on our WeChat channel, right? So. Yes, WeChat. And since WeChat is so popular, everyone is on it, including uh, TensorFlow. Yeah, even Asia. I'm on it. Yeah, even you on it. <laughs> and uh, thanks for the Chinese advocates at Google. They provide this WeChat post, like depicting the, the, depicting the TensorFlow light uh, and also the videos. And other than WeChat, we also posted the videos on Bilibili, which is a okay. video sharing platform for comics and animation. Oh, but, really? Yes, but uh, it's been very popular. A lot of people are watching them uh, for development. It's okay. surprising. Oh, I have to check that one out. I hadn't yeah. seen that. So comics and animation are two of my favorite things. And now we got TensorFlow there, too. Thank you so much, Sue. And thanks, everybody, for watching this episode of Coffee with a Googler. If you have any questions for me or if you have any questions for Sue, just please leave them in the comments below. And whatever you do, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Thank you. Subscribe button. Subscribe button. Well done. Thank you. Yes.